Hello and welcome to this video. In this video we've got something a little bit different. In fact, I want to give you a behind the scenes of this camera and take you on a little journey as to how my desk is set up. Let's give it a go. Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Aaron Patrick. I am a chartered accountant, a certified UK trainer with fancy new logo, that quick box chap on the internet, and also head of account here at Boffix. Now, as I was saying all those things, it reminds me of how many hats I need to wear. And for me to wear all those different hats, I also need a setup and an opportunity to be able to make sure that I'm getting the most out of those hats as well. And that's what this video is all about. I wanted to give you a behind the scenes look at the camera to see my setup. So it's a little bit like MTV Cribs, but without showing the whole house, I'm just showing my desk, but you'll get to grips with it. Anyway, all the items that I'm gonna be listed to, I'll make sure I've got a list to below, but some of these ones I think are gonna be really useful too if you're looking to do anything similar to either doing live training, or if you're gonna run your own business from home, or if you've got to practice, or if you're doing a YouTube channel, or all of the other aspects that are gonna come through on today's video. So stay tuned and let's have a look at what is on my desk and how it all works. Okay then, so first of all, you'll notice that this camera's going in and out and my hands are all the way over here, so what's happening there? Well, let's look at the first part of my desk. I'd like to think it's one of my favorite aspects of the desk and it's actually the new Mac Studio display. Now, what the reason that I went for this particular display, and if you've seen some of the previous videos, you'll notice that I actually do kind of use quite a few different displays in the past and I had this huge widescreen monitor um, that was one of my kind of key points and I actually said on, on a previous video how I would highly recommend the widescreen aspect but actually it's become a bit of a hindrance to me and that's what you'll find if you ever want to do some live videos and you want to be able to record things and you want to actually share your screen on a regular basis because that large aspect ratio isn't something that everyone's going to have and then trying to condense that large aspect ratio into something smaller actually caused me more problems than it was worth when trying to conduct live videos. So that's why I definitely was happy to make the switch to a kind of more conventional looking thing. And as you can see here, as I'm looking straight at it, it has a really good camera. And the, the clever thing is the camera moves with you as well. So as you're kind of getting to grips with having conversations with people. You, know, you might have to move down to grab something, want to showcase something, whatever it's going to be. And then this setup works really, really well. Now it is Mac only, so you're going to have to be in that Mac ecosystem for it to work properly. And if you are in the Mac ecosystem, I'm currently thinking this is the best particular monitor out there on the market. So very, very happy with it. Literally, it's what, two weeks old at this point of recording. So yeah, Definitely something I'd highly recommend. Let's go and have a look at the rest of the tour though. So yeah, as you can see on my desk, one of the things that is important to note is the desk itself does go up and back down again. Highly recommend looking into getting that sort of feature, getting that sort of option. The standing desk is actually really, really useful, especially when you've got more dynamicness that you're trying to get out of your content. For myself, raising that up high when I'm doing some live training can be an absolute game changer and it's something I highly recommend kind of looking into as well. Also over here to the right of it is a newer addition to my setup and it's all to do with the live streaming and trying to make sure the live streaming is going to work better for me and that's the introduction of this wonderful Rodecaster Pro. Now the idea of this one is that I get multiple ways in which we can bring sound into it and you can see there that's me talking now and that's coming through and it's connected directly to the mac itself and this is just a way where i can really start elevating my product and i've got multiple ways in which i can bring definitely some great use of audio in there and one of the things that i found the most important about this setup is that it gives me the option use this over here to be able to actually go in and actually hear what's going on and i find that really 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 powerful also on my desk here this is quite unique this is actually a uh, from a company called Hydrate, and this water bottle actually tells me off if I don't drink enough, so that's been something that's been quite useful for me. Also on my desk, you'll notice that I have my mobile phones, are always quite useful. This is my kind of new Android device that I've kind of started to 
have a play around with and have a look at. I personally don't use Android that much, but with the videos that I do, especially if there's any Android updates to QuickBooks, for example, I need to have some form of Android device. And what took my eye on this particular device was this whole dual screen um, capability that we've got here. So I've got one screen here, one screen there, meaning that I've got the opportunity to kind of utilize both screens handy little pen as well. And what I've found this is a great device for note taking. Now, normally when it comes to note taking, my go-to would always be the iPad mini. Absolutely love this machine. Definitely, definitely, definitely. If you, you know, if you're in that, again, Apple ecosystem, this is an absolute joy of a device. And this becomes my go-to in every single meeting that I ever obtain, because normally I can just go in there, jot it if I need to, and everyone is happy. Actually controlling my desk, I have the Logitech Craft keyboard and I have the Logitech MX mouse. And then underneath here you can see, um, which is normally out, is a nice trackpad. Now for me, having the right keyboard and mouse is absolutely essential. This mouse here, I couldn't recommend enough. The reason this mouse is so useful and so powerful is because it has these extra buttons. So you have those buttons there, which you can utilize just down here, look. Um, and it's got this extra scroll wheel as well. These buttons become an absolute productivity dream. There's certain applications that they become an absolute lifesaver, like Final Cut Pro. You can then, you make sure these are set up to maybe do a bit of cutting, a bit of pasting, and you get to delete and cut and do much, much quicker than you can with a conventional mouse. And while I have these two set for anything else, is copy and paste. How many times have you had to copy and paste something from one area to another? having it set up like this is absolutely a dream. Also, just to the left of it as well is my Stream Deck, a little bit of a productivity plus there. Um, the opportunity that you can, even just during meetings, be able to switch between settings and things like that. You know, getting yourself set up to be as efficient as possible is the name of the game. Now, if I kind of span around over to this, I've got my main camera, which is the A7C. Absolutely love this camera. More and more and more I get used to it, the more I'm starting to get really into what it's doing. It's an A7 series, but the C stands for compact. So although I'm getting all the professional quality and everything else and all the extra bells and whistles you get with an A7 series camera, I also get the compactness, which for me is a real benefit. Up here on top of it's a bit of a shotgun mic just to get some extra audio if I need it. And then the lens I'm mostly shooting out these days. A nice wide angled lens, um, really, really useful, especially as you can see here, where you get the opportunity to come up with that lovely little bokeh effect in as well. Running the whole of my system is my wonderful MacBook Pro M1 Max. Absolutely love this machine. Can't say enough good things about it, to be honest. Absolutely love it. It just keeps going without even turning on the fan most of the time, which is wonderful. One of the kind of unique setups that I have with mine as well, as we kind of scoot along to the left here, is that I have this whole second desk just here. Now, the reason I have this second desk here is because a lot of the time I'm having to set maybe up another computer for maybe an employee, or I'm trying to play with something that needs to be set up for someone else. And having this second desk here, again, it goes up and down. It's exactly the same as my, my other desk. So this, this desk here is all about trying to give me an opportunity to be able to quickly come and set anything up. This monitor that I've got just here, absolutely wonderful. This is the LG Ergo, and it moves around all over the place in any direction, any kind of um, orientation you need it to be. This here is my older MacBook Pro 16 inch, but primarily it's actually on Windows at the moment and it's my main Windows device. And having a Windows device is really, really useful for the stuff that I'm doing at the moment. You know, I could be jumping in between a, uh, a Mac client or a Windows client or even a Mac employee and a Windows employee. And be able to jump between the two is really useful just to be able to make sure you're on top of it in terms of your IT. Just a quite a nice little keyboard, this one. It's the Logitech Gaming Series and the Gaming Mouse as well. Um, I don't get to game very often these days, but having the, um, the these set solutions are really, really nice. Uh, little HomePod just over there for entertainment purposes. Behind the Mac as well is a really nice monitor that um, we found. It's a Samsung Smart Monitor. So if you think about your smart TVs, well, that's exactly what that monitor's all about. 
and it's really handy because it's got things like AirPlay on and everything else that goes with it, which basically means that I can just send anything up there. You know, if I'm doing a live broadcast, for example, I can have my monitor screen up there just wirelessly over, um, and it just gives me that functionality through there as well. And you'll also notice here, I've got my iPad Pro. Absolutely love this machine. Um, I know my iPad mini is probably getting more use out of anything else at the moment in time, but still the form factor and everything else that goes with the Pro. Highly, highly recommend it if you've got the opportunity. It still forms an important part of my daily use. So I'm using this a lot for scripts and having making sure I've got my training materials up and running and ready to go. And if I'm ever out and about, this is also one of the devices I'll always, always, always take with me. It sits alongside nicely the iPad mini more than anything else. I never need both of those devices, but having the option between the two is really, really powerful and useful. Over on this left-hand side here is probably one of my most impressive pieces of kit I've bought in a long, long time. That's my M1 MacBook Air. If I remember leaving the house or I need to go downstairs or whatever, if I'm going outside or whatever it needs to be, it's always the first device I'll pick up. If I don't need the power of my MacBook Pro, um, if I'm not doing any kind of extreme editing, that is my first port call, literally at most and each and every time. Behind me, we have my wonderful array of just, well, some people call it junk. I call it memorabilia, always in the background there. It's wonderful on-air neon sign here. We've got this really, really powerful, uh, really amazing award that I got for being a certified UK trainer. Hopefully that's coming out all right. And just every other piece of item on here just changes over time, really. It's designed to be, you know, something that I can just change and, and, and go with and try and make the background a little bit more dynamic. Obviously, I have the big TV you've seen in most of my videos out there. One of the things I'm trying to stop is this glare, is this element on it. That's one of the things I'm trying to figure out how to do. I need to get some sort of matte finish for it or something like that to kind of finish it off. Uh, but I do like this one, it's got these nice colours coming in the back as you've probably seen in the videos. It goes really nicely with the um, the neon lights that are going on with my Nano Leaf technology. My microphone of choice these days is the Rode Podcast mic, I believe it is. Mainly because it works so wonderfully with the Rodecast Pro. Absolutely love this mic, I've, I've started to really enjoy having this XLR connectivity. Normally I'm using a USB-C type microphone, so kind of my backup, if you like, is the Elgato Wave. Incredible microphone that I'd highly recommend people get hold of if they, they're looking to upgrade their mic setup. And I do have a Blue Yeti over there in the corner that I use every now and again for kind of voiceover elements and stuff on some of the videos. But this has been really, really nice. It's really really easy to get kind of set up and, and everything else. There's a few tears and teething problems I had to learn with the Rodecaster Pro, getting that all set up. But now we're set up, I'm more than happy with it. And that's pretty much it for a kind of breakdown of what I use on a day-to-day -day basis. Everything that I've gone through here is all about learning stuff over time. Everything that I kind of do on a day-to-day -day basis is trying to improve my workflow. So for example, having this Rodecaster Pro has been an absolute godsend in being able to keep on top of my audio. So I'm, as I'm having to do videos quickly, I can listen to them quickly, I can understand what's going on, what I can hear from there. As I'm going through and trying to bring on more live guests, I can bring telephone calls in now, bring them into play. It just brings up and elevates that game for me. And it hasn't kind of improved the quality, it's improved the workflow. And you'll find that most of these decisions I've made around here is all about workflow optimization, as opposed to maybe trying to get those little bit of extra gains in quality. The quality is nice, and I'm glad that, you know, hopefully I've sound better than I have done before. Hopefully I've got more better options for kind of getting more dynamic sounds, maybe dynamic shots and all them sort of things. But really my main point when I'm trying to do anything is trying to improve my workflow. Having that many different hats and having to jump between all those different areas means that I need to be able to have a solution where I can quickly and easily be able to bring these into play. So for me, every de design choice I've made, every purchase I've made here is all about how do I improve productivity and make sure my workflow. As a great example for that one, highly thing I'd recommend is a little gadget like this one. So this is just a USB-C to pretty much everything device. I've got HDMI out to that Ergo monitor. I've got 
internet there to give them fast internet. I've got a cam link on here so I can get connectivity. I've got an opportunity to connect to my keyboard and mouse as well. And that means no matter what device it is, I can just quickly plug this in, even my mobile phones and my mobile devices, and I can get access to stuff nice and easily. And it's things like that that, you know, you learn over time that yes, it's a bit of a kind of an excessive waste at times to have that just sat there doing nothing, but the times I need it means I can quickly go in and do something. Prime example, if I'm live on the air and trying to do either deliver a course or I'm live on the air to YouTube and trying to do a podcast, then if I need to quickly jump onto, say, my mobile phone or if I need to jump onto an iPad to show a mobile app or whatever it needs to be, I can quickly do it without no problem. Literally, it can take me less than 30 seconds to be up and running and ready to go. And that's really key. We've been doing a lot of meetings lately where we're trying to improve the process of getting mobile apps or mobile op optimization, or we're talking about how we're going to deliver a particular new training or new, new examination, and we've had to quickly just jump into a mobile app and show the rest of the group. Well, being able to do that quickly and efficiently is really important. Other big tip I would always say is your ecosystem. I'm very much a brand loyal, and that helps me quite a lot in keep that in that efficiency. So obviously Apple is going to be a huge part of most of the equipment that I'm utilizing. So I've got the MacBook Pro and it goes to the Mac display and coupled with an iPad and, and an iPhone means that you've got this wonderful, great ecosystem that literally is flawless from end to end. But also it goes deeper than that. So my cameras are all Sony so that I can have interchangeable lenses to make sure that I'm used to it. I understand the, the, the way that it works in terms of the menus. It means that I've got very similar grading when it comes to having multiple cameras coming in. And it also means that I've got that opportunity to know if something new comes out, I should be aware of it or not, or not need to be aware of it. Because I understand the ecosystem, I understand what the increments mean. From an audio point of view, I've now gone full blown into the XLR world. I've got that Rodecaster Pro that we've got just here. And with a Rode microphone means that they work really well. My wireless mic setup, well that's all Rode as well. So that's all communicating brilliant with it and that's got the integration. And if I'm out and about or if I'm looking to do something a bit quick and easy, I've got my Elgato set up as well. This microphone isn't going to waste because if I am going out and about and maybe in a hotel room or something, then this is the microphone I'll take with me so that at least I've got not as good a sound, but it's definitely better than anything else I could take with me to be able to get that sound as good as I possibly can. This day and age, having access to both a Windows and a Mac environment is really useful. Many a time I've had to jump in maybe to help a client out or again, help a, help a colleague out, help an employee out and having that opportunity there. So I'm really lucky that I've got an Intel based MacBook at this point in time, which means that I can install Windows on there. Whereas the new M1 Mac is the best machine I've ever had in my life. But the limitation there is it now is only Mac. There is no option for a Windows opportunity there. Unless you're looking to Windows 365, which I'm dabbling with from time to time, but not 100% been able to do all that I need to do on a Windows side device. Everything that side of the monitor though is all to do with having equipment ready to go and do filming or do some more content drops or if we need to kind of advise a client on maybe a setup for their EPOS solution. I've got a whole opportunity of, of hardware over there and yeah it's just industrial racking really to make sure that we've got, got everything in place. I have some pretty meaty light so on the mobile experience you'll see over here got some pretty meaty lights up there just to keep everything all lit up nicely and you'll see that just below the lights there is pretty much just a load of equipment needed to make sure that we've got everything we need and just below there is all the equipment I need to keep everything all nice and tidy for some live setups and everything else that goes with it and there we have it pretty much my battle station as I like to call it now having these two different areas where I can go between the two desks is Highly recommended having this kind of L shape um, setup. We've not spoke about it, but I do have kind of another project working on down here where we're trying to solve the issue of having two factor authentications within a hybrid business. So it's something that we'll do probably a dedicated video on one day. But the idea then is that anyone can grab a telephone number or a text message or whatever it needs to be going forward.
But that's that. What do you guys think? Is there anything that you would like to see a little bit more detail of? Maybe an explanation as to why I've gone down a particular route? Anything you want a more detailed video for? Or let us know your setup. If you've got a setup video, we would love to see it. So get yourself down in those comments below. Let us know what's going on and we can add them accordingly. My name's been Aaron Patrick. As always, this video has been an absolute pleasure to do. Please, please, please let us know below if there's any other questions you want answering. And I'm sure I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.